Well, good evening, guys. My name is Wes, and I'm pretty excited about getting into the Word with y'all this evening. Uh, my goal for this devotion is that uh, we would all be encouraged to, to nurture our faith, right? One of the things that Terry told me that this project was all about was that we as believers could kind of get together to encourage one another so that we could have a healthier life balance between family and jobs and outdoor stuff and faith and so forth. And uh, my goal this evening is that you would be encouraged to prioritize your faith above all of those things so that all of those things would have a foundation upon which, upon which to rest, right? Have a guide upon which to for whom to follow, I guess you could say. So I want to get into the word first. We're going to be in Matthew. It's going to be Matthew chapter 13, and it's going to be verses uh, 3 through 9, and then we'll skip down to 18 through, I believe, 24, somewhere along in there. Let's le read this real quick, and we'll get into it. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And now we'll skip all the way down to verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. With the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. So this is one of my favorite parables because Jesus tells this parable and then he very conveniently explains the whole thing. So it's a very, it's a very good one to understand. He just kind of lays it all out there. But what's going on in this parable? So this first guy, he hears the gospel, he hears the word, and he doesn't understand it. And he, the evil one comes and snatches that seed away and there's nothing happens at all. He just kind of goes about his life. And this is as if I were to take a handful of seeds and throw them on this path here in the woods. And in 30 minutes, birds are going to come and snatch it away. And it's, there's nothing's going to happen. It's, it's very much a tragedy. Uh, the second person uh, heard the word and was very enthusiastic about it. But then he went out and he realized that, you know, maybe the world's not as excited about Jesus as I am. And he experienced some persecution. He experienced some pushback. In our culture, that might look like us getting shamed for our faith, uh, being called hateful or something like that. But uh, either way, this is another tragedy, a person who walks away from the faith because of social pressure or pushback. Um, the third person, what happens with this one? He hears the word, but the deceitfulness of riches takes him away from that word. He uh, sees the fame and the fortune to be made in this world, and uh, he doesn't want anything to do with the gospel. He wants to pursue those things. And the common thread in these three people here is that no fruit was produced, no harvest was produced because there was no understanding of the gospel. There was no understanding of who Jesus is. There was no understanding of sin. There was no understanding of God's wrath and God's punishment. There was no understanding of grace and mercy. And there was no understanding that they needed Jesus so badly. But what happened with the fourth person? This is the person who uh, heard the word and said, you know what, this is, this is what I need. I need Jesus. And this seed grew and it thrived and it produced a giant harvest. And this is what it should look like in our lives, right? And I decided to do this next to a food plot because I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good illustration of what our faith should be doing in our lives. And 
I'm not the greatest food plotter in the world. I've had quite a few food plot failures. I'm hoping to have good things out of this plot because all of the elements are there. There's good dirt, there's fertilizer, there's a weed-free seed bed, and there's quality seeds at the proper depth, and they got a good rain on them as well. And this is what it takes to produce a harvest in our faith as well. It's not something that we just say, you know what, I do need Jesus, and now I'm gonna go out and live my life the way that I've always been living my life. That's not repentance, that's, that's not faith. Um, when we repent of our sins, when we have faith in Christ, we go out and we say, I, I, I'm just, this is all that there is. I'm gonna forsake everything for the sake of the kingdom. And we see fruit from that when we study the word and when we pray and when we hang out with like-minded people at, like we're doing right now, of course, the proper context of that is going to church and so forth, but uh, this is certainly an encouragement as well. But uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get across tonight is I, I want you to nurture your faith, and I want you to know that I'm talking to myself as much as anybody because I'm somewhat inconsistent about um, getting up at the proper time and reading the Word. Uh, sometimes I'll do it later in the day and not spend as much time in it, but the best time for me is first thing in the morning. That might not be the best time for you, but I would encourage you to find a time and do it on a regular basis. And if you haven't done it in a while um, and you feel kind of hopeless in that, that's, that's okay. What you should do is change the trajectory so that you eventually hit the target, right? Um, start, for example, in the Gospel of John and just read a little every day and pray and pray have some enriching and fulfilling time with the Lord and you'll see it produce a harvest. If you do that in faith, you'll definitely see it produce a harvest. You'll be a better husband. I'm sure there are some women on this channel as well. So you'll be a better wife. Uh, you'll be a better parent. Um, you'll be a better worker. You'll be more conformed to the image of Christ day after day, because that's what the Bible calls us to be is more conformed to the image of Christ. We should be less like ourselves, less like the world, and more like Christ. And we learn how to do that by reading about Jesus and learning what he did and who he is and learning about the grace and the mercy that's there. And will we be perfect? No, we're definitely not gonna be perfect, but that's where the grace comes in. And because there's grace, we can be a little better every day, be more conformed to the image of Christ every day and flourish more in our faith every day. So that's, that's what I have for y'all this evening, and I hope this gives y'all some encouragement. Certainly gives me some encouragement to uh, be more intentional about getting into the Word, because when we have uh, a healthy faith, everything else in life tends to fall into place a lot better. Our priorities line up a lot better when we have our faith as our first priority. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Lord God, we thank you, first of all, for Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the seed. Uh, Lord, we thank you that we have your word to read. We thank you that we can pray. We have that intercessor in Christ. And God, I want to lift everybody up this evening that's listening, uh, myself included. And we would be very intentional about getting into your word and turning away from our sins, being less like ourselves and more like Jesus Christ every day. We thank you for the forgiveness that we've had. We thank you for the new birth, that we are new people and don't have to conform ourselves to the trash that this world has to offer anymore. And God, I pray that we would walk that walk this week. Lord, please be with us as, we, uh, as we're at our jobs, as we are with our families. Let us be more like Christ as a reflection of Him, His mercy and grace every single day. Uh, that we would uh, that we would just be the people that you've called us to be, that you have transformed us to be. Lord, you see the physical ailments of everybody who is, is watching this. And God, I want to lift them up. The cancer, the arthritis, uh, everything else that's going on, financial issues. Lord, I certainly pray for healing, but I pray primarily that through these problems that we have in this broken world, that we would be more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. But please be with us as we go about our weeks, Lord, for safety, uh, Lord, for uh, just a greater desire to get into your word and study about Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.